You learn how to throw an infinite combo. In this video, I'm gonna show you the infinite combo, talk about some ways I train on the bag, and also show you a little secret tip for really brutalizing a guy and winning that last round when you're out of gas. Already did strength and conditioning day, so we're gonna work more on timing and range and footwork than power. Always start out before a heavy bag round, before any training. A little bit of shadow boxing. Maybe one round. And like, um, you know, bah, bah, thinking speed. Balance is super important, keeping your footwork right. If you're hitting air, you have to be balanced. And if you're moving slow, your technique has to be really good. If you play a song really slow, you can hear the bad notes. During the breaks, I like to work the slip bag. All right, second round of shadow boxing. Spice speed. Get the loads blown out. Stressed out. Should be breathing hard and sweat by the end of this one. And bounce off a bag. I can lie to you. Throw it in there. You have to throw the strike right. Or you know you'll pitch over like that. After I get a couple rounds of warm up in, get the lungs stretched out, I take a couple minutes to kind of bring it all back down. But a lot of people worry about warming up too much and then feeling tired. But you, there's a fine line. You can warm up too much and then you lose energy for your workout. But most people don't warm up enough. Everyone thinks about working their power when they're on a heavy bag. Yes, the heavy bag is really good for developing power, but you can also use it in lieu of a partner to work on your footwork and range. I'm gonna show you a couple ways that we do that. Everyone knows, finish your combos with a kick. Finish with a kick. That's like, if you don't know shit about kickboxing and you wanna yell some stuff at the guy and he's punching, tell him to finish with a kick, you're probably right. Finishing with a kick is a great idea, but just cause you throw a kick doesn't mean you're done. Jab, cross, lead leg kick. Don't worry if your lead leg kick sucks, everybody sucks, we've done a video on that. We've covered this a lot, but after that lead leg round kick, I like to just step into it like I'm pitching a baseball. Boom, and throw that cross. Now I'm really close, almost, the cross is almost stifled. I throw the hook, then the rear kick. Now from here, this is the one that I have trouble with. I'm not good, I'm better at the other one than this one. Coming back from here, if we use that good step four of our kick, we push back, and we can land in a hook. I'm not saying that that's gonna happen a lot, but I'm also not saying it'll never happen. Sometimes you can throw a kick and maybe he kind of eats more of it, he's still coming forward and pushes you back and you can check his progress with that hook. Or you throw this and they're running away and you land with a good cross. This is more something to develop your ability to adjust your range as the bag moves around a little bit you know, in a sort of controlled environment, instead of trying to figure this shit out when you're sparring. So we go one, two, lead leg kick, two, three, rear leg kick. Now I'm gonna come back, three, two, lead leg kick, two, three, rear leg kick. Should look something like this. Watch me mess this up now. Boom, boom, bang. My range is getting a little messed up. See, he's getting a little too far for the hook. Doesn't mean it can't be a jab. It's really left, right, left, right, left, right to simplify it. Boom, boom. Bang, he gets too far away for this one. It could be a straight, straight pendulum step in, straight hook, boom, bop, bop, bing, bop, bop, bang. Doesn't have to be these punches and these kicks. It's just the principle that I'm responsible for adjusting my range away from the bag. It could be off, you know, body kicks. It could be off head kicks. 
and I need to be able to adjust my range, maybe checking its progress with this posting hand. But you're responsible for your range from the bag. Maybe if you're having trouble with this one, bing, bing, maybe you're not getting that perfect range. Maybe you end up too close. That happens, you kick and you fall down, you're too close to get a good cross. Or maybe off of your cross that was at perfect range, you're too far. You're responsible for your range. So we have this pendulum step motion that we've talked about before. And so if I'm too close off the kick, boom, step, step, bing. This is how I adjust the range for that kick from that punch. And that's a good drill you can do all by itself. You do that and you'll have that range down pat. Now the one I have trouble with is throwing the left hook off of the right kick. I train with guys who are really good at that. They throw this thing and then this comes and they seem to be like right in range. So I need to practice that more. Bing. Maybe I have to cheat my feet around a little bit. You know, you've got to practice this stuff. You've got to practice these things in isolation so hopefully they can materialize in a fight. And these drills where we combine it all, it's more just creating muscle memory to where we don't have to stop and go, wait, hold on, let me get my feet right. We need to be able to throw that thing, even if we're not in the greatest position to throw our stuff, we shouldn't have to stop just because we kicked. But don't get stuck in the idea that you have to throw this kick off of this punch or any combination of that. You could throw your right hand off a right kick, same with the left. That's real similar to, uh, you know, that drop step that they teach in, you know, boxing and other combat sports. You're only limited by your balance and what you can keep up with up here. So pick a pace that you can keep and try to keep your balance and keep that range and keep that timing. It doesn't have to be two punches. But we don't need to be stuck in the idea that we're done as soon as we kick. Now, let me show you what I do to finish out my bag work session. I'm actually gonna do this in MMA gloves to keep me from kind of going too crazy on the bag. We're not going to do this to develop power. Uh, we're doing this, like I said, to develop timing, range, and rhythm. This is to simulate the end of a fight, last round, where everybody's tired, everybody feels like shit. You feel like your punches aren't doing anything. He feels like his punches aren't doing anything. But we're going to play on the fact that he doesn't know that you feel that way too, and he just feels like he's defeated, and we're just going to pour it on. That way, if, we're, if the decision is close or we think we might can get him to drop his hands, we might still have that last shot of landing some real significant strikes, even though we're tired. He's likely gonna be running away. So, we're gonna get the bag going like this. And we're gonna do 20 seconds, staying with him. In balance, staying in range, no matter where he moves. Twenty seconds, hard, fast. Seconds to breathe. This is where we separate. He runs away. We get a movement again. And we're going to stay with him. We're going to get him. We're going to cut him off. He's trying to run away from us. All right, he's going to try to run that way. And we're going to stay with him. Cut him off. Pour it on. Even if he tries to come after us, we're going to be prepared for that too.
when you don't have anyone to train with and you're on the bag, don't just always hammer away on it, which that's important too. It's important to develop power. But if you've already done strength or power training that day, work on volume and chaining stuff together and adjusting that footwork so that you're standing at the, pro the appropriate range for your target in balance so that we don't get caught reaching or we don't get caught leaning back. If you want more fitness tips, self-defense techniques, gear reviews, as well as concepts and principles that make you hard to hurt, make sure you click subscribe and turn on notifications.